Isaiah 26 and 3. And we thank God. Let's give Pastor Beverly a hand of praise for sharing, releasing that word last week about your mind. She spoke on. She spoke on. I love it. Living a life. I'm sorry. Becoming godly minded in an ungodly world. Becoming godly minded in an ungodly world. So if you were here, if you missed last night, uh, after Brother, after Minister Will released it for YouTube, you can hear that message. One thing she said last night too that was so good too. She said you cannot have a positive life and a negative mind. Say, I cannot have a positive life and a negative mind. That is so good. Good morning to all our Facebook watchers, our YouTube watchers. We thank and praise God. Short word, it's going to be real short and sweet. Amen. Let me tell you, sometimes the short and sweet messages stick with you the most. Sometimes you have a 99 scriptures and and 10,000 points, you don't remember. But the Lord just put up my heart. I, and a lot of scriptures were coming to my mind this morning. But he just gave me this one scripture. And I'm going to walk the scripture and give you the points and release your amen. Thank but I'm going to leave a thought with you. Turn to answer your name and say, where is your mind going? Uh, where is your mind going? Where is your mind? Is your mind racing? Is your mind doubting? Is your mind worrying? Is your mind natural? Where is your mind? Where is your mind going? Not your, not the one sitting next to you. Where is your mind going? Come on. Isaiah 26 and 3 from the King James Version says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace. Say perfect peace. Perfect. The enemy is always after your peace. Uh, yeah. Come on. <laughs> he don't want you to have a good day. He don't want you to have a good minute. He don't want you to have a happy occasion. He's always after your mind. He's always after your peace. Say my peace. You can have an awesome day, come out of an awesome service, come out of anointed service, come out of prayer, come out of fasting, and the enemy's right there to steal it from you. Amen. Glory to God. Isaiah 26 and 3. I know this is going to resonate. This is a word from God. Amen. Because I wasn't going to close a share today, but I got the pet. The buck was passed. But it's a good buck. I'm going to walk with it. Amen. Isaiah 26 and 3 says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace. Whose mind is stayed on thee. Why? Because he trusted me. A lot of times we read the scripture, but then we forget to read the rest of it. it says, because he trusted me. So because you trust in the Lord, that's where your peace is going to come from. Mm -hmm. That's right. right in there. Now I'm not going to trust in circumstances. Mm -hmm. I'm going to trust in thee. Amen? That's right. That's right. The message Bible says, people with their minds set on you, you keep completely whole. That is so good. Completely whole means there's nothing missing and nothing broken, and my soul is whole. My mind, will, and emotions. That's what the enemy comes against. As I said last night, as I was sharing, when you become born again, your spirit man is saved. The enemy cannot touch your spirit. So if we all pass away right now, our spirits will go home to be with the Lord right now because the, the, the spirit man of you is the part of you that is saved. It's the part of you that says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. When we become born again and saved, it's not our hands and our feet. Some people say, I looked at my hands, my hands look new, I looked at my feet. And your hands and feet are still the same size. If you didn't put no lotion on them, they still got a hash on them. Y'all not saying that. If you're a size 12, 13 shoe, your feet ain't going to shrink. So the part of you that's new is your spirit man. He's taking away the stony heart and giving you a heart of flesh. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. So the message Bible says people with their minds set on you, you keep completely whole. Steady on their feet. And he's always trying to knock you off your feet. But he says steady on their feet because, why are you steady on your feet? Because they keep at it and don't quit. <laughs> it doesn't mean things don't come to knock us off of our feet. I choose to keep at it and don't quit. When I'm having a down day, Sister Doris, y'all not saying nothing. When my joy level is low, Pastor Faye, I choose to keep at it and don't quit. When you don't understand your members, I choose to keep at it and don't quit. Y'all not saying nothing. When you don't understand why people do what they do, I say I choose to keep at it and, and, and don't quit. And that's what that's what has made all of you in here strong warriors. That you took a licking and you kept on taking. Sister Monita, that's why you're such a warrior because no matter what the enemy threw at you, you still fought it, you still fought. You still and the things you go through and you endure it makes you a warrior. Yes, we cry and yes we miss it and yes we lose it, but I choose not to uh stop. 
I choose not to quit, and I'm going to keep that. I'm going to keep preaching. I'm going to keep teaching. I'm going to keep praising God when I don't feel like it. Y'all not saying that. I'm going to keep at it. I'm going to endure no doubt hardness as a good soldier. When hardness comes, I'm going to keep enduring. Say, I'm going to endure hardness as a good soldier. I'm going to read again. The message Bible says, people, peak people with their mindset on you, you keep completely whole. Steady on their feet because they keep at it and don't quit. Say, Lord, I thank you that I'm going to be a person whose mind is set on you. And I choose to be completely whole. I choose to be steady on my feet because I'm going to keep at it and I'm not going to quit. Come hell or high water, come witches or warlocks, I shall not quit. Give God a praise. The New Living Translation says, You will keep him in perfect peace, all who trust in you and whose thoughts are fixed on you. we got to keep our thoughts fixed on God. Not on how is this going to get done, not what is this, when I'm going to get healed, when I'm going to feel better, when the bill is going to be paid, when my husband coming, when my wife coming, when my boo boo coming, when all, when all this stuff coming. No, you'll be distracted. When am I going to move into my new house? When is my ministry going to grow? When are no people going to... No, I keep my mind fixed on you, Lord. You called me. You anointed me. I'm going to do what you keep me. Tell me to do it. Until you tell me to do something different, I'm going to be faithful to you. Because the verse of the faithful man shall abound with blessings. Amen? Amen. The Amplified Bible says, You will keep in perfect and constant peace. The one whose mind is steadfast. That is committed. Say committed. Committed. And focused on you. We got to be focused on God. You get your eyes off of God, you'll sink. When Peter walked on the water, as long as he kept his eyes on the Lord, he walked on the water. So he took his eyes off, he sunk. But one thing he did, he did walk on the water. <laughs> he might sink. So that goes to show you, as I'm as I'm walking my my course of life. As I'm doing what it is that you've called and commissioned me to do, I'm going to keep my eyes on you because if I take my eyes off of you, I'm going to sink. Right, right. If I take my eyes off of you, I'm going to fail. Right. If I take my eyes off of you, I'm going to be discouraged. If I take my eyes off of you, Bonnie, I'm going to get into the flesh. If I get my keep my eyes off of you, I'm going to be distracted. Yes, 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 yes. Break it down. Yes, yes. Yeah. And the says, you will keep a perfect and constant peace. Constant peace. The one who keeps his mind steadfast, that is committed and focused on you. That's where God wants. He wants that. He, he wants me committed. Full class participation. Say he wants me committed. And focused on him. That's so good. And both inclination and character, because he trusts and takes refuge in you with hope and confident expectation. I'm going to give you three things to keep our mind on. Number one, keep your mind on him. Keep your mind on the Lord. That's how you're going to have peace. Number one, keep your mind on. Keep your mind, number two, on, on and in his word. Say, on and in his word. On and in his word. Not your words, his word. His word. Not your thoughts, his thoughts. His thoughts. And number three, the promises God has spoken to you prophetically and in his word. Amen? So three things to keep your mind on. Number one is on him, which is the Lord. Number two, in and on his word. Number three, the promises God has spoken to you prophetically and in his word. How many prophetic promises has God spoken over your life and you haven't seen them come to pass yet? Amen, amen. That's what you're supposed to keep your mind on. Amen? Right. Lord right. God, three things you're not to keep your mind on. Three things you're not. Number one, don't keep your mind on your circumstances. That's right. Come on. Number two, don't keep your mind on life, ministry, family, jobs, etc., etc., etc. And number three, don't keep your mind on things that haven't happened yet. Yeah. Let me step to that. Well, not to keep your mind on number one, we all have circumstances. It's not what you go through, it's how you go through it. Number two, don't keep your mind on uh, life, uh, uh, ministry, family, etc. You can have your mind on good things, on God things. But if you think about it too long, it could cause you to be distracted. Yes. It could cause you to drift. Yes. Amen? Yes, that's right. And number three, don't keep your mind on things that haven't happened yet. Yes. Hallelujah. Keep trusting Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. And for those, I just want to release this word to, to those of you that are believing God for some things to happen in your life. I want to encourage you today to pray and plan. Mm. Amen. A lot of times we do a whole, whole lot of praying, praying, I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying. God said, okay, you did enough praying, now it's time to pray 
and plan. Hallelujah. A homework assignment, which I want you to meditate on this, is going to be Philippians 4, 8, 9. I'm closing. I'm going to turn over to Pastor Beth and let her pray y'all out of here. Amen? Philippians 4, 8, 9. Would you read it, Pastor Beth? Amen. This is your homework assignment. Just we keep reading this scripture every day. I want you to read this scripture seven days until next Sunday when you come back. Let's get it in your spirit. Philippians 4, 8, and 9. Go ahead. Uh, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, Whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Verse 9. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. Amen. Amen. That's, yeah. that's your homework assignment. Philippians 4. 8 and 9. It says, whatever you do, think on these things. I like that. Think. King James Version says, think on these things. Yes. And I want you to ask yourself, where is your mind going? This week, just, just watch where your mind's going. And when you see your mind getting off track, pull it in. Yes. Amen. When you see your mind doubting, pull it in. Mm -hmm. When you see your mind racing and worrying and trying to figure things out, which we all do. We all do. I do it too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because let me tell you something. I'm going to close with this. If you let your mind race and you let your mind go, it will bring you into a funk. Yes, it will. It will. Amen. It'll bring you into depression. Right. It'll bring you into oppression. It'll make you not want to move forward. I'm, let me tell you, I'm talking about what I'm living. It'll make you go there. I'm trying to tell you shit, that word that Pastor Beverly had last night. It shifted your mind and uh, uh, getting your mind together. That was a word from God. That's why she had so much fight. And I told her, I said, I want you to get that message together. Whatever you thought you lost, put it together and come back with it. Because when the enemy don't want, if the enemy can keep get your mind, he got you. What are you going to do depressed for God? Nothing. What are you going to do if you're discouraged for God? No, you're not. That's why I'm always teaching. That's the platform of my ministry. My heart is desire is to see your soul's whole, your mind, will, emotion. Because I know if your mind, will, emotion is off track, you ain't doing nothing. If the enemy can discourage you and get you down and thinking about your circumstance and what hasn't happened yet, what this and that and why God, why and when God, you ain't moving out this door. Right. Amen. So we have to have our souls whole. We have to have our minds in a good place so we can do what it is that God's called to do. I'm going to give God a hand of praise. Amen.